a ton of characters in Jump Force, 40 playable to be exact, hailing from 16 different anime and manga series. I did the math, that means in order to be fully caught up to know enough about all these characters and the anime they're from, you'd need to have watched 3,781 episodes of anime. Uh, that number has probably changed since I wrote this script. Please, uh, <laughs> don't check the math. Fortunately, you don't have to do that. Here are the origins of all 40 anime slash manga characters from Jump Force. Monkey D. Luffy, the leader of the Straw Hat Pirates who ate a devil fruit that turned him into a rubber man, which is why he can do things like this. And this. And, uh, wait, what? Blackfoot Sanji is the Straw Hat's chef and one of their most capable fighters. His fighting style entirely consists of kicks as he needs his hands to cook, and thus they're too important to fight with. He also will never kick a lady. Zoro is one of the strongest fighters in the Straw Hat crew, with the ultimate goal of becoming the greatest swordsman in the world. He's a master of Santo Ryu, which means he uses three swords, one in each hand and one in his mouth because more swords are better, right? Marshall D. Teach, otherwise known as Blackbeard, is one of the big bads of One Piece and one of the most powerful characters in the series thanks to the fact that he has two Devil Fruits, granting both the power of darkness and tremors. Warning, huge One Piece spoiler alert. Sabo is Luffy's brother from his early childhood. Everyone thought he was dead after his pirate ship was sunk when he was a child. Turns out he survived and is now the second in command of the Revolutionary Army. Boa Hancock. Also known as the Pirate Empress, Boa Hancock's unparalleled beauty is a dangerous combination with her Love Love Fruit, which causes anyone who harbors any sort of attraction or arousal towards her to turn to stone. <laughs> Izuku Midoriya, also known as Deku. This formerly powerless hero in training inherited the super strength quirk One For All from the world's greatest hero, All Might. Now he has special attacks inexplicably named after US cities and states. Naruto Uzumaki, a talentless outcast turned ninja savior, Naruto Uzumaki has had quite the journey earning a spot on the Mount Rushmore ninjas. He's incredibly strong, backed by the power of the Nine-Tailed Fox, his sage training, and his Okage bloodline. Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto's greatest frenemy. Sasuke is a survivor of the Uchiha clan. In his later teen to adult years, he's become more of a swordsman, with a fighting style that mixes swordplay, electricity, and weird techniques named after Shinto gods. Though, I like to pretend that they're named after Okami characters. The copy ninja Kakashi Hatake is the mentor of Naruto and Sasuke in their early years. He sports a Sharingan eye formerly belonging to his friend Obito, that he can use to perform a technique called Kamui, which can transfer objects to another dimension. Kaguya Ootsutsuki. God, that's a hard one to say. Kaguya Ootsutsuki. She's a man eater. To explain all of the plot threads that lead to Kaguya's origin and revival would take far too long. So, in a nutshell, Kaguya is the mother of Chakra, she's really, really, really old, and she's essentially the final boss of Naruto. Gara's a good old sandboy. He started out as one of Naruto's fiercest foes and ultimately wound up being one of his closest friends after the two duped it out. Now he's the Kazekage, or leader of the Hidden Sand Village. Boruto Uzumaki. After the conclusion of Naruto Shippuden, the next chapter of the Naruto saga began, starring Naruto's son, Boruto. Like his father, he's a master of the Shadow Clone Jutsu and the Rasengan, two techniques that you can expect to see a lot of in Jump Force. Yusuke Yurameshi 14-year-old Yusuke Yurameshi was a middle school delinquent who died saving a boy's life. Then he was brought back as a spirit detective, solved a bunch of cases, and now he shoots mountain-destroying bullets of spirit energy out of his fingers. Toguro is Yusuke's main antagonist during the Dark Tournament Saga, and he's probably the most muscular person in Jump Force. When it comes to sheer muscularness, it's hard to beat Toguro at 100% or beyond. The pure-hearted Gon Freaks is a young hunter off on a quest to find his terrible father, who abandoned him when he was a baby. Like other Hunter Hunter characters, Gon fights using Nen, which for him, manifests as freakishly powerful strength and energy that he likes to incorporate into a game of rock-paper-scissors. Killua Zoldink. 
Killua is Gon's best friend, and he's especially good at ending fights super quickly by ripping off a vital body part before the fight even begins. He's a master assassin at a very young age, but beyond that, he's actually a very happy-go-lucky kid who likes to play with weaponized yo-yos. Kurapika Much like Sasuke, Kurapika is a surviving member of a clan that was massacred. When Kurapika sees the spider, the symbol of the phantom troop responsible for the murder of his clan, his eyes go scarlet, and he becomes a nearly unstoppable force dead set on revenge. He's also got cool chains. Where to even begin with Hisoka? For one, he's a killer clown slash magician, and he's one of the strongest, most intimidating characters in Hunter x Hunter. He's also got an insatiable appetite for violence and is obsessed with fighting those he deems worthy of giving him a challenge. Ichigo Kurosaki is part junior high student, part Shinigami, part Quincy, part Hollow, part Fullbringer, and if you don't know Bleach, that probably sounds like a lot of nonsense. Basically just know that Ichigo feels like number one, shining bright for everyone. He's living out his fantasy, the brightest star for all to see. Rukia Kuchiki Rukia initially awakens Ichigo's Shinigami powers by transferring her own power to him in order to help him save his family from a hollow. Throughout most of the series, Rukia is in a weakened state thanks to her transferring so much of her power over to Ichigo. But once she gets her powers back, she's able to do some pretty cool things with her sword, Sode no Shirayuki. Aizen is arguably the most iconic villain in all of Bleach. The main antagonist of the Soul Society arc, Aizen is able to use an ability called Absolute Hypnosis to completely control the five senses of anyone he reveals the ability to. He's also a master of Kido, and most of his most powerful moves in Jump Force are products of that mastery. Renji is one of Rukia's best friends and is the vice captain of the 6th division in Soul Society. He's a wild and brash Shinigami much like Ichigo, but probably the most notable aspect of him is his sword Zabimaru, which if you've played Soul Calibur, it's basically Ivy's sword. If Ivy's sword could also transform into a giant bone dragon and eventually into wearable bone armor. Pegasus Seiya. Saint Seiya is one of the all-time classics of shonen manga, and Seiya is the man at the helm. He's what's known as a saint, a mythical warrior who has served the goddess Athena throughout the ages. Seiya dons the Pegasus cloth primarily, but when he turns into his awakened state in Jump Force, he wears the Sagittarius gold cloth. <laughs> Another saint, Shiryu wears the Dragon Claw. Shiryu is also consistently viewed as one of the most popular of the main characters of Saint Seiya, and like Seiya, his awakened form grants him his shiny gold claw. Come on, it's Yugi Boy, you know who he is! In Jump Force, we actually play as Yami Yugi, aka Dark Yugi, aka Atom, aka Taller, More Handsome Yugi, with the cooler voice. Fun fact, Yu-Gi-Oh! wasn't always about a card game. In fact, the popular anime that aired in the US actually picks up the manga storyline at Volume 7. Before that, the story was super dark, with Yu-Gi challenging bad people to games and then giving them some horrific punishment that drives them insane when they lose. Goku! Arguably the most recognizable character around, Goku is of course the main hero of Dragon Ball. His story covers everything from when he was just a young boy, all the way to him being a father of two and a grandfather of one. He's a pure-hearted, good-natured soul with a dangerously unhealthy desire to fight. Vegeta is the eternal rival of Goku. The two started out as bitter enemies, eventually became less bitter enemies, then became sort of friends, then became bitter enemies again, and now they're in a pretty good place. Frieza Frieza is a galactic conqueror who first crossed paths with Goku and friends when he attempted to gather up the Dragon Balls on planet Namek in an effort to gain immortality. Since then, he's basically been Goku's arch nemesis, coming back for revenge on eh, multiple occasions. Piccolo is one of Goku's oldest enemies and closest friends. He's actually kind of more of a father to Goku's son Gohan than Goku is. In any case, Piccolo is probably the strongest non-Saiyan, non-Android hero in Dragon Ball, assuming you're not counting Boo. Cell is the perfect android made up of cells from all of the strongest fighters throughout all of the Dragon Ball universe. This basically means he's got nearly all of the techniques of Goku, his friends, and even his enemies, along with freakish strength that not even Goku could match at the time. Trunks 
Trunks is a time traveler, which means that there's basically two versions of him. The taller, more handsome Trunks with the cooler voice from the future, and the bratty, obnoxious Trunks from the present. Fortunately, in Jump Force, we get the cool Trunks. The master of the Hokuto Shinken, Kenshiro is about as pure of a martial arts master as you'll find in Jump Force. Relying primarily on punches, kicks, and pressure point strikes that will make your body contort into a pretzel and your head explode like an egg in a microwave. Gross. Ryo Saiba. If there was an award for the character that feels most out of place in a fight amongst superpowered aliens, monsters, and demigods, it would go to Ryo Saiba. He's a sweeper who works to clean up the crime-laden streets of Tokyo with his Colt Python 357 Magnum. Still, he's an extraordinarily skilled gunman, capable of firing a series of shots that all land on exactly the same spot on a target. <laughs> Jotaro Kujo, the star of Part 3 of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Jotaro is arguably the most recognizable face of the series. He possesses what's known as a stand, which is essentially the physical manifestation of a user's fighting spirit. In Jotaro's case, his stand is called Star Platinum, and it basically allows him to beat the living hell out of people, all while keeping his hand in his pocket. Dio. Dio is the arch nemesis of the Joestar family, with the version in Jump Force taking the form of his character in Part 3 of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, which is actually his head from Part 1 attached to the body of Jonathan Joestar, also from Part 1. He's an extremely powerful vampire made even more powerful thanks to his stand, The World, which has the power to stop time. <laughs> Dai is from the anime slash manga Dragon Quest The Adventure of Dai, which is based off of the Dragon Quest video game series. In a story that should sound all too familiar to fans of Dragon Quest, the Demon King returns, and Dai must set out on a grand adventure to defeat him and bring peace back to the world. <laughs> Kenshin is a master swordsman who was previously known by the moniker, Batosai the Manslayer. Many years later, he became a peaceful wanderer and used his skill to help those in need as a way to atone for his many sins. He is one of the most purely skilled swordsmen in all of Jump Force, and what he lacks in strength, he makes up for with godlike speed. Shishio Makoto Despite his appearance, Shishio is actually not a mummy. The many bandages on his body cover the countless burns he received after being doused in oil and burned alive. He's also an extremely skilled swordsman who uses a sword called the Mugenji, which is a serrated blade covered in oils that he can ignite to create special flame techniques. And finally, Asta. Asta is a young boy who dreams of one day becoming the Wizard King. The only problem is that he completely lacks any magic skill. Instead, he has trained his body to an insane degree, making him extremely physically strong. In addition, he possesses a five clover grimoire that gives him access to powerful anti-magic weapons. And that's it! Thanks for making it this far. If you want more Jump Force, make sure to check out my full review, along with some gameplay clips featuring Yugi, Jotaro, and more. And for everything else, keep it here on IGN.